Welcome to the very first edition of Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays. I'm Justin Gard from KFAN Radio and the Gopher Radio Network, and we thank the Minnesota Lottery for bringing us the show tonight. We're going to be here each and every Sunday once the season starts at 7 o'clock right here on Facebook Live, and I welcome the head coach of the Golden Gophers, Tracy Clays. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing good, thank you, and uh, thanks for having me and, and doing this show. We're excited to do it. We think it's one of the first of its kind here on Facebook Live, so the cool part is I only get to ask like four questions which I think everybody appreciates, including the fans. So I want to remind you, the people watching on Facebook Live, throw your question in the comments section. We're going to have plenty of time to get to it in our second segment. But first, a couple of questions from me that we all have to sit through. And I want to start, Coach, with just fall camp. You're wrapping it up. You're about to start your prep for Oregon State. How's camp going in your eyes? Yeah, you know, really, it's been one of the more stranger ones in a way. You know, football-wise, uh, our, our kids have done a good job, and, and they've taken care of what they need to take care of to continue to prove. But, you know, we started out with the Coach Cheryl situation and, and him having some medical problems. And, and But the good news is he's been released from the hospital, and he's back home, and so there's light at the end of the tunnel now. And, and, and so that's a good thing. And then, uh, you know, uh, Coach Savell's father passed away here this last weekend, and he'd been in the care um, of hospice here about since when we started yep. fall camp. And so... Uh, those are two things we've had to work through and the kids have learned and uh, you know, I think that from what Coach Gill went through it's helped us a little bit but you know, in a way it's a cruel world and the fact that nothing stops and they don't give you any extra days to prepare for the games and you got to find a way to, to deal with that along with get your football part ready but uh, I, I think we've done a great job here the first part of camp and, and uh, I think football wise we, we've improved uh, since spring ball and uh, we're ready to move on. And I know the kids, they probably just soon play here in a couple of days. And, and, uh, but as coaches, we'd like a few more days to practice and, and then we'll get going. Well, it sounds weird to say it, but if any program knows how to handle situations coming up, it's yours, right? And with, the, with everything that's gone on here the last couple of years, and have to imagine some of your upperclassmen that have emerged as leaders over the years are very helpful in making sure you guys do what you need to do. No, no question. Like I said, they've done a great job. and, and uh, you just tell kids you, know, you, you can't, uh, you have no control over that situation. We make sure that, hey, when you're here, it's football. Concentrate on football. There's nothing you can do about it. Let's be the best we can be. And, but make sure when you get away from football and you leave here that, that you take a little time to, for those people to have them in your thoughts. And they're good people. They've done an awful lot of good for the University of Minnesota. And, and so it's good that we're getting back to, to more of a normal situation here. You've had now a spring practice with your new offensive coaches, I'm talking about Jay Johnson and Bart Miller. Now you've also had a good series of fall camp practices. Do you see an identity forming there of what these guys, specifically Coach Johnson, wants to bring in? How do you feel like that's coming along? I think it's going good. You know, it, again, you know, that's a two-way street is that uh, he has the things that he likes to do and, and uh, that he believes in, but at the same time being new and you know, you, the kids that are here, you, you got to do what they do best and, and their strengths. And so uh, uh, not having Mitch in the spring, I think that slowed that process down a little bit, but it helped to give Demery and Connor Rhoda all those reps. So now it's a matter here of, of cleaning that all up. Hey, here's the things that Coach Johnson really wants to stress and emphasize, and where does that fit into with what our kids do well? It's, all, it's fall camp, which means fans always want to know about the new players. Who or can they see on, well, Thursday night against Oregon State, but Saturdays throughout the fall. You've had a handful of practices now to take a look. Anybody emerging as someone who might be able to help you? You know, I think there's a, there's a few kids on each side of the ball. Uh, Kobe McCrary is from the junior college. He wasn't here in the spring running back. I think he continues to give us good depth uh, at the running back position. And, and uh, we knew he's a good running back. He's done awfully well on pass protection. I mean, so you know, he's ready to go. Uh, when you talk about the... Uh, um, uh, young kids and new kids coming in. You know, Tyler Johnson from Minneapolis North yep. is—he's been the biggest surprise on offense. We we knew he's a great athlete, knew he had great hands. Uh, watched him on the basketball floor. He has has tremendous hops and and. Uh, but I'll tell you the thing I didn't realize is, you know, he's come in and competed every day against older kids, and it hasn't bothered him one bit. He he's had success, and he's made us better. In certain situations, and uh, uh, we were talking about, said, uh, you know, I think that goes back to the AU basketball. You know, we knew he wouldn't have some strength uh, that most kids have because he played all the sports, played baseball, played everything. But I think the one thing that AU basketball did for him was uh, he's been used to competing against yes. older kids, 
and it didn't phase him one bit. And so uh, from day one, he stepped up and made plays. And so uh, it's exciting. I, I think we'll find a way to get him on the field to help us out on offense. And then you know, on defense, Kamal Martin has done awfully well at linebacker. Another local kid. Another local kid, yeah. And uh, uh, amazing, you know, being a quarterback in high school and that. And, you know, that's a value those camps. We had him convert camp, and, and he did quarterback drills, he did uh, tight end drills, and he did linebacker drills. And so, uh, um, you know, I told Coach I'd like to have him on linebackers. And, and after he did the drills, and it's worked out good for us, uh, Antoine Winfield has done well, uh, Keandre Thomas at corner has done well, and so has Tony Durr. And then, uh, you know, Carter Coughlin was doing well also, uh, and he got banged up and missed some practice here this last week. So we'll see where that goes here in the next week. So it's a good class. You've got a handful of kids there that are in position to help us. Now we'll see just what their roles will be. The cool part is, those are my questions. I'm done. Now we're going to turn it over to the, uh, the viewers. And actually, we've been soliciting questions on Twitter all day. And we're taking Facebook Live questions now. So if you feel free to put one in the comments section now, we're going to get to it in our second segment. But first, some Twitter questions that we've been coming, to, coming in all day to our various accounts. And this one, Coach, is about wide receivers. Isaiah Gentry and Melvin Holland, two guys that have played a little bit for you over the last year or so. Are they in line to contribute at this point? And what do you think of their camp so far? Yeah, they both, they're better players. They had good springs going into the spring. Here they've been banged up a little bit uh, this fall. They started out strong, but again, this last week, uh, two weeks, they've missed a few practices. Isaiah was back to full speed um, here the other day, but you know, they have the ability. They're better than they were a year ago, but you know, along with ability goes reliability. You know, those kids you can count on to be there every week and uh, or most of the weeks. So, you know, injury is always going to play a little bit of a part. And so, you know, if they can stay healthy, there's no question that they can help us. But uh, they have to show that they can handle the grind and, and stay healthy. And, and uh, otherwise, you know, the time of the routes and the things you like to do on offense, it, it's hard to do that with somebody who's not at practice most of the time. So uh, uh, we hopefully we can keep them healthy if they do. They can definitely help us with their skills. Our next question comes from the account of at Gopher70, and he wants to talk about uh, the defensive side of the ball with your pass rushing ends. Who do you think might make an impact there? You know, Galen Elmore has continued to improve. Uh, Hank Ekbe has had his best uh, fall so far. You know, sometimes that's what happens when all of a sudden you're a senior and, and, and you know, you, you continue to improve and you have your best. And I've talked a lot. You, you know, when you talk, see the good teams at the end of the year, each year their seniors play well and and that's one thing we probably haven't had our senior classes play as well yeah. for whatever reason you know and when it when it comes uh, to certain games and so you know I've challenged our seniors of that that hey we're gonna have a good season you got to play well and lead the way and, and they have so far they've done a tremendous job so uh, um, yeah you know we'll, we'll have to see uh, uh, where that goes but uh, you know, for, for the most part, Hank has done well. And then we have so many linebackers that run well. And, right. and how that will all work out, I don't It'll probably turn into a two-hour meeting tomorrow. We're going <laughs> to talk about roles and depth charts. And we have so many bodies, you know, that can do that. Uh, a newcomer would be uh, Tayon Devers, who's done awfully well on rushing off of the edge for us coming in here. And so uh, we're, we're going to have to get that all sorted out here. And, that's why I say I like to take 10 days to prepare for the first game because you set the roles, you give kids a couple of days to work on them and accept them, whether they like them or not. They, right. got it, they need to accept them. And so that's one of the big things that will be a big discussion in our roles going to this game is when we get into those passing situations, who are we going to put in there rest of the passer? Our last question for the Twitter segment before we go to Facebook Live is from at Adrenaline Funds. Wants to know, as a defensive coordinator, you probably liked it when the defense was ahead of the offense. As a head coach, you have to think a little bit more globally. Where do you think? Is the defense ahead of the offense right now? Is it 50-50? What do you think about that? You know, first, you know, it's hard to have a good day, you know, overall as a coach. When you're the head coach. You know, you have offense, defense, or special teams. You yep. know, the chances of all three of them at each day in practice going good is not real good. So <laughs> it's something that uh, makes that a challenge. It's been different for me, you know. And, but uh, I, I would say this, is that our offense, for people who've, who've been out to the public scrimmages, and the, I don't feel like our offense is near as far behind the defense as it has been in the past. Now, I say that defensively, we're going to be ahead. We're making Coach Savell and the staff, they've made adjustments, slight adjustments. But it's pretty much the same system the kids have been doing for five years. You know, on offense, when you switch like we did, it's going to be a little bit behind. 
But the thing where you really tell the difference is our depth in the front seven uh, on defense is that we have a lot of depth, a lot of kids who can play. Offensively, I've kept it no secret, you know, on the offensive line, we don't have a lot of depth. Mm -hmm. and, and we have very good young players there, and they just need a chance to grow up a little bit and, and uh, develop a little bit. But, so when we put in our second unit against some of those guys, the second unit on defense, you know, those young guys on the offensive line are having to grow up fast. And so I don't think, you know, from our first unit on offense to defense, the defense is ahead, but I don't think it's as large a margin as it's been in the past. I was at the practice where some of these young guys were going up against Steven Richardson and some yeah. of those older guys, and you made sure they got an education that day, having them run that fourth and short play over and over again, right? Yeah, we, you know, we ran it. I don't know. I thought it was six or seven times. I think on the, we got to watch him film. It was closer to 10 or 11. Well, and... I'll tell you, I watched it six times, and then I had to go, and I'm told that <laughs> it, it went like way longer than that. So I, I think it is closer to 10 or 11. Yeah, you know, I just, I'm a believer that when you need a happy yard that, that you got to get a happy yard. I don't think that's the defense. I think the offense should control that situation. And I was making sure that, that everybody on the field understood that. We're just getting going on the show tonight. When we come back, we're going to be taking your Facebook Live questions, the questions that have been coming in throughout the show. We've got time to answer just a couple of those as we get going tonight. You're watching the first edition of Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays. We're brought to you by the Minnesota Lottery. TCF Bank Stadium, Thursday, September 1st, as they take on Oregon State under the lights. Visit mygophersports.com for more information. Just like that, here on Facebook Live. Welcome back to Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays. I'm Justin Gard from KFAN Radio and the sideline reporter for the Gopher Radio Network. We thank the Minnesota Lottery for providing us this awesome setup tonight. Now we're going to go to basically live questions, Coach. Coach, that yeah. uh, questions that have come through uh, as we were talking. And our first question, as we queue up the graphic, comes from Julie. She wants to talk about your, I think, mathematics background. And you've yeah. said that with the coin toss, you're always taking the ball. What went into right. that? When you broke that down in some kind of study, or is that just a gut feeling that you have? It's just one of those things. I, it's simple as this: is that if you take the ball first, if there is an extra possession in the first half, you're going to get that extra possession. If there is in the first half, and so that's I'd rather have that extra possession in the first half. I'm a big believer in the leads at halftime, and that have a lot to do with what goes on in the second half. And also, you know, if you take the ball first, even at the end of the game, if there is an extra possession you're going to get that extra possession. So it's as simple as that. Now, will we do it all the time? I think weather can play a part in that decision as to, uh, you know, how you want to start the second half, you know, from wind direction and, and that. So, but in most part, you know, it, is that it's just, it's a common sense deal. If you take the ball first, at the end of the first half or at the end of the game, if there's an extra possession, you're going to get that extra possession. And if you look at your staff's record over the years here, lead at halftime has been pretty important, right? You've talked I, about that a number of times. Yeah, I think uh, most good teams are this. Next question on Facebook Live is from Joe, who replaces K.J. May. I know I've asked you this question no fewer than 10 times since K.J. left, but what do you think of the wide receiver group as a whole? Well, you know, on the show, I thought I'd come here and you'd tell me who that was going to be, and, and you'd answer that. I for like me. Rashad still. So and I know uh, he's had a pretty good camp. Yeah, Rashad's had a good show. I, I think Brandon Lingram is another kid at tight end who, you know, when you talk about replacing KJ May, I look at is who's going to move the chains and who's going to score touchdowns. It's amazing how many times he got first downs for it yeah. or he scored. So that's the type of, of player that we need. But, uh, you know, I'm not worried on the depth part there. I think Brandon Lingram can do that. I think Rashad Steele could do that. Uh, Drew Wolitarski has had a very good camp for us. So we have the kids to do it. Who it'll be, we'll just have to see. The one thing I would like to see us do a, a better job is, is taking advantage of what the defense gives us rather than just always look for one certain receiver. And I think we'll be more consistent on offense if, if we do that. Next up is Ben with our Facebook Live questions. Ben wants to know about the Athletic Village, how it will enhance the uh, program image. You see it every day looking out of your office, a lot of construction going on right now. I do. I tell people it's the ugly bunny. You know, <laughs> they're moving dirt around and burying things, but there's nothing there that's going to help us recruiting yet, you know. So, uh, but no, it, it's a great project. Uh, um, 
you know, I tell people it's not an arms race, it's an investment in kids. And, and for the first time that the kids at the University of Minnesota and those kids who come to the University of Minnesota from now on will have the same type of facilities to, to, to train in year round that every other Big Ten school or anybody else does in the nation. You can get an argument who's got the best, but this will definitely put up there, us up there at the top and give our kids the same, same um, facilities training because everybody wants to be the best in, in whatever they do. I don't care be a businessman, lawyer, football player. And so we need these facilities with the training room and, and the new weight room and all those things to develop our kids. And without a doubt, it's been the missing piece, we feel like, for us to get to, to where we're going to compete year in and year out in the Big Ten. Next Facebook Live question comes from David. What's the biggest hurdle you guys will need to overcome in order to be successful this season? Some adversity or some things that are popping up that you're going to have to account for? Yeah, I think it just all comes down to, it's no secret, we have to improve on offense. I mean, that's the biggest hurdle. You know, I think defensively, I don't, I don't believe you maintain. I think you get better, you get worse every year. And so we've challenged our kids to get better. I think uh, Coach Sawbell and the staff have done some things to take care of some kids' strengths and play more of their strengths to make us better, you know, and it's been a good thing for me to get out of that room here for a few months. And, and uh, but we can't finish 102nd, 103rd, 108, whatever in, in offense, in scoring offense. We have to get up there. We don't have to go all the way to the top 10, but we need to get up there somewhere in the middle, 40, 50, somewhere in there. If we can make that jump on offense, I think we can accomplish some good goals here at the University of Minnesota. This Last week. question for tonight, Coach. Oregon State will be in this building on Thursday, September 1st. You've obviously looked a lot at them. I know you'll start working on them here in the next couple of days. Yeah. What's a thing or two to look for for Oregon State on that Thursday night? You know, their, their athleticism on offense. You know, the, they can spread the field on you, make you defend the whole field. And so, you know, we're going to have to tackle awfully well. And, and, and we're going to have to go into it really not knowing quarterback-wise you know what they're going to do there is that uh, we think we have an idea but uh, you know coach Anderson did a great job at Wisconsin and and he wanted to be a spread team but that really wasn't Wisconsin's identity and right. now he's at Oregon State he has that and so they spread the field they make you defend a lot of space and they're very athletic on offense and so we're, we're going to have to tackle in space and then defensively you know we're going to have to keep the ball in front of us and and uh, offensively is that uh, you got to score points. You know that's the name of the game in, in today's football. And, and uh, I think with Mitch coming back and the improvements we've made in the offensive line and our skill, I still believe we have the best personnel we've had since we've been here. And I'm excited to see those guys get started. Thanks for the time during camp. Enjoy the last couple of days, and good luck getting ready for Oregon State. Yeah, enjoyed it. Thank you. That's the head coach, Tracy Clays. A reminder, no show next Sunday. We're going to let them get ready for Oregon State, but there will be a show Sunday, September 4th, 7 o'clock, right here on Facebook Live, and then we'll continue each and every Sunday on 7 o'clock with the head coach, Tracy Clays. For all of us here at Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays, thanks for watching, and thanks again to the Minnesota Lottery for giving us this opportunity.